Welcome back everybody into another daily recap. Today is the second day of August and it's a Tuesday and as always we're going to have a look at what happened during New York on gold. As you can see already, this is what happened. This is uh, during London. On the 15 minute, we see that uh, price went from a huge demand area uh, around um, 30 minutes after the London open, went all the way back up like 100 pips from the demand area, leaving another buy area to continue up until the supply area. So as you can see here, we have the supply area based on the 15 minutes, based on the Asian session. This was the spike that was happening during Asian. And, um, and this is where we are most likely going to see some rejection on the downside to take some sells if we have the confirmation buys from here or safer buys from the demand area of course as always we're not going to have a look at uh, candle by candle as you can see still long new york open uh, found support at the same price that it was before even this candle respect the support and with the uh, this one was comex open at uh, 820 price went aggressively bullish to the very next uh, supply zone we're going to see where it is this is supply zone and we're going to have a look at it but as you can see price aggressively broke we're going to have a look uh, if we could catch anything here we and of course the trades that i took then as you can see we can see directly from the 15 minute here the price action um what happened in supply all the way back down found support again bounced then it was some sort of bouncing with new york stock exchange opening but still support was a holding and the supply area as well was holding so we found ourselves ranging between those two levels of course this is a well uh, is a 100 pip range so it's big enough to trade and to take nice nice trades in between price finally then after london london close made a new lower high on the 15 minute and looks like we are now breaking we try to break below we are still of course with low volume the price action is quite choppy but we can easily go back to the buy area if this was not already a buy setup Let's go into the one minute, and as you can see here, have a, we have a look at what happened. This is pretty, slightly pre New York, and this was the support that we were talking about on the 15 minute. This was the previous resistance, and um, of course, we had this supply area which was charted up from these last uh, eyes. And as you can see, price uh, spiked up, spiked down, and this was pre comex open. This is exactly the comex open candle. No lower week, no real entry, nothing. Uh, the only thing that we could have done was ending <laughs> when the candle closed uh, bullish. But anyway, I mean, this could be as, uh, as well a resistance to price to continue bearish. Remember that we are at a supply and it can happen everything but um price broke above aggressively a first rejection the, at the first uh part of the range of the um, supply area we had the first strong rejection which gave like eight pips not not even 10 price then just as you can see it was at a ppl bounced and then went up again up until the top of the supply area where it gave us uh, nice nice sell setups first we could have found i was looking for some buys over there for price to bounce and then continue bullish but price then broke up aggressively below and when the price was then respecting sort of the, the trend line but most of you know, the market structure so we were making the last high new lower high new lower highs failed to make a new lower high uh, it actually gave us nice sell ideas 
and we already had this buys area charted up, which was of course respected, huge uh, demand, very nice candle um, setup, 60 pips again. This is after the New York Stock Exchange opening, before this is the before the 10 a.m. candle. Again, another rejection at the PPL. When the candle was closing bullish, this was a nice bullish entry, which gave us like almost 100 pips. And of course, we also had this um, set up and watch live for the candle at 10 a.m. exactly, the candles that were bouncing and we were respecting these previous lows and the PPL. So as you can see, not a, not a single candle, let's remove this, which doesn't matter. Not a single candle closed below. And whenever you entered, if it was here or here, after this candle or after this one, that would have been profits. And, um, but let's have a look at what happened on active trading today. So let's see. Okay, so let's start here. This is the pre-London charting up. So demand area for possible bounce back up. The supply, which is, uh, I forgot to show you where this supply has been uh, taken from. We have to go back in time a little bit. As you can see, this is the la here it was melted, was not respected, but these lows was still a possible rejection area. That's exactly where today the price reacted. Okay, so um, this is pre-London. So I was charting up demand, demand supply. As you can see, the first demand area was not respected. I mean, you could have taken maybe like 10 pips of scalps, but not a clean by section. And this was London Open. And after London Open, you have this nice candle that is reacting exactly at the demand um, top, the, de the top of the demand area. Nice candle setup, which will give you 100 pips. 1779, 1769, this was 100 pips move. Of course, I'm not trading London, so that was just um, afterwards pre New York. I was looking at the chart, what happened, and I saw that the price went exactly to my demand area and then bounced back up. But then, this is um, remember that my plan I should be trading New York only after um, 2 30, but I was looking at and I traded here. This was. Uh, 210, I guess. I had this sell area. I saw the spike up, the, bu the bullish move, the rejection of this level. At the candle closed, I enter sells, expecting price to continue bearish. And even if price only went to my, to the previous support, that would have been more than 15 pips, so that would be a profitable trade. Price then found support again at the, at the lows, and I, I took 50% when the candle closed above my level of reference, and then I took, of course, the last 50% at a small stop loss of 12 pips. Could have also been 10 pips, but anyway, it's, it is what it is. Um, I don't know, probably not even. 20 pips, where would it be? Would it be taken out exactly 20 pips? <laughs> I would be more, much more mad if I took 20 pips loss instead of just 12 to see just price going back down. Anyway, this one was a 15 pips, uh, 15 pip loss and it's exactly at this entry. I actually entered when the candle was still open and price failed to make to the uh, 10 pips mark. Uh, we, we, will have, we will see it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I took full, I think I took it 
before the candle cl actually closed. Um, it was the f I mean, I think it is okay. -ish. The only thing is that it's before my trading time. It's a strong rejection, and if price from there just went down, like it did here, like uh, I mean, one candle confirmation, then I would be mad for missing it. So I think having this confirmation from a high time frame sell area is not that bad. Let me have a look where the price. Yeah, I took 50% over here and then I took close full here, which made sense because I was seeing that sellers were not having any juice left for, I mean, price wasn't, they were not able to push the price down. So that's why I, um, I, I took it out uh, the full. So anyway, I took this first sell and as often happens that I see that price is actually rejecting the, uh, the top of the supply area or the low of the demand area. I saw this candle close. I didn't really trust the entry and uh, I actually um, took this when this candle was live, I took uh, the, the sell with the stop loss over there. So price went 10 pips. Uh, it placed my stop loss at break even, rejected, bounced back up, and it took me out at break even without partials. But as you can see, that was just the top of the of the rejection. It went, then went more than 15 pips, and we're going to see even afterwards. I was looking for then supply turn demand, so I was looking for the bounce from here. I didn't take any loss because the, for the nice entry, I took the entry at the first bullish candle, went at 10 pips, 11 pips, stop loss at break even, and no partials taken. So quite mad that this one was going bearish, so this one would have been profit. This one was a good trade, happy uh, to have been break even. And then I've, I took a sort of impulsive second entry. If you see, price was bouncing. Okay, rejected this area, but then this candle grabbed liquidity and the bullish candle was moving up to possibly continue at upper bottom. But anyway, I took my, uh, my full loss, 50% to 50%. Afterwards, what I was looking for, okay, now we are in a clean bearish bias. So we have these, trend line between making of the price making lower highs and lower lows coming from a supply area i saw this um, this impulsive move and i was looking for the end of the pullback so that's why i analyzed this candle the very next small candle when this candle was turning bearish that was my entry i took an impulsive entry 15 pips it will go uh, to 20 pips but anyway, I took 15 pips and the rest at break even because as you can see, price retraced but respected these highs. So that's where I took my second entry and I took 15 pips uh, partials, automatic. And then my biggest mistake of the day, <laughs> I closed full at 20 pips because of this possible rejection here. Anyway, that's what happens. It press went 80 pips in profit. So just the runner of this entry would have given me a profitable day. Instead, I'm still in a losing day. And that's because of not closing, impossibly closing the runner over here for 20 pips for no reason. There were no reason to take any, uh, to take out the trade. Especially, I mean, this one, I left it uh, go either break even or profit. Why this one was different, I don't know. In my price broke even this area, but since it's not a relevant area, I was not looking for sales, especially because we are at a buy area. As you can see here, buys, this is, was a clear buys area. I didn't take it, I was looking afterwards, but this one was, um, I already knew about this PSA. What I took was this impulsive, um, trade one minute before New York Stock Exchange opening, I think, or maybe the, the minute before. 
yeah, two minutes before New York Stock Exchange open. Uh, I mean, this kind of closed. So this one was the last minute before the open. And I took it because I said, okay, there's a strong bearish move. This might be the end of the pullback. This can be still a supply area. And I took it when this candle closed, the rejection closed. It went 10 pips, but um, for the, due to the spread, it was not uh, good enough for placing the stops at break even. And then I took the full loss with the New York, New York Stock Exchange opening. And as you can see, also these buys were coming from a demand area. So this pullback was not going randomly, coming from a random place like here. If you see this is a pullback, this is a pullback coming from a random place. It's not coming from a demand area. If it was coming from here, then it would be much, much more relevant for the buy liquidity. This pullback, this one, was coming from a buy strong demand area. So I should have not taken the sell easily and entering one minute before New York search change open. I was a little bit unlucky, but anyway, it's, it's a good lesson to learn. What happened was that, okay, I saw, okay, now I understand that these buys are coming from a demand area and we are moving aggressive. So I think it is exactly this candle is closing bearish, the red one, and it's closing, it is staying above the, uh, the area of the supply, it's staying above the PPL, and that's where I entered buys, sort of counter trend, but uh, in trend, considering the liquidity. I entered buys, and I went 15 pips. Then 15 pips, I think, uh, exactly, it went like 20, this one was a nice enter for sales because as you can see, it's respecting the bearish move, creating a lower high, failing to break above the previous lower lows. So that's a very structured um, market, as you can see, if you want to look, have a look at it, even without the PPLs, price is failing, we are creating the last high, new lower uh, lower low, new lower highs, new lower low. This candle is showing that the price is failing to make a new higher high or to make a new lower low, lower higher low to continue bullish. So this candle reacting exactly here is giving continuity to this bearish move. And that's why I mean, I was in, in buys from here, so I was not looking for sales, but that would be absolutely a good trade idea. Absolutely. But anyway, you see that we are reacting again at the buy area. Bam, bam. This one could have been your entry. You give 20 pips because now the range is, is quite bigger. You want to target the previous highs, and there you go. We are coming towards the 10 a.m. candle, which also this one, as you can see, is a very good break and retest. You understand where the liquidity is coming from, and then you know that the range will be bigger and bigger. There you go. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, pictures. As you can see as well, this is the buy that I was looking for immediately at the candle close. So it is live. I understand that we have nine minutes before the, the 10 a.m. candle. We know, as it happened here, we know that the pre 10 a.m. candle open can give us a liquidity, can give us a pullback, and we are at a strong demand area, so there's a high chance for price to continue bullish. Then at 10 a.m., price can continue bearish if it wants, but this is a very good opportunity, and I don't have any more images. I don't know if I... No, they're not here, but anyway, as you can see, and that's because of I was taking it live. So as you can see, this 
went 94 pips. Let me let me do it like this. There you go. Buys at demand, sell at supply. That's it. That's what I should do. Anyway, I understood also the uh, 10 a.m. candle, the 10 a.m. price action. So for now, here we are very, very bearish. We can this candle can be the end of the pullback. Now we have the 10 a.m. candle. If we respect these highs and this structure, then the price should continue bearish. But as I see, you can see in the video that I posted, this candle, bam. If this candle closes bearish, then we can have the further confirmation of price continuing down. But due to the fact that this candle is closing bullish, you change your bias. Okay. This is not this cannot simply be um, the end of the pullback. Maybe it will be later on. Maybe it will be exactly this level. Yes, it can happen that the price will go here and then continue here. But you have a double bottom. You have further confirmation. You have high volume time. This for me is a even for a scalp is a short term bullish bias. And we're going to see here. You give 20 pips because you need to cover this PPL with sort of some weeks. I, and I see that the price is still making lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Price made a lower low. Yes, but where did it stop? At a strong supply area. Strong supply area. The 10, the 10 a.m. volume found liquidity and is bouncing back up for me it's bullish okay oof 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 okay now you see how it closes this candle very aggressive but it's you, you can you expect it is reacting where at this ppl you might be okay why did i enter buys uh, it's such a strong um, bearish candle such a strong bearish trend Mm, okay, but what is what is your um, PSA of reference? Is your is your PPL? Is this one? Has any candle broken your level? No, that's why your stop loss is there. Yeah, you don't like to be in drawdown, but that's what the stop loss is for. Is 10, 30 pips? Let the market tell you that you're wrong. Not don't tell you yourself. And there you go. Yeah, not the prettiest, but you just have to wait and you go in profit. Expect the reaction. But as you can see, price now is making new higher lows and higher highs. We broke the structure. We broke the, um, the bearish structure. And you can also see that price retested the last highs. So this was the last lower high, lower low. And when the price is breaking, we are giving confirmation to these two as being new lower lows because now price made a new higher high, but this can still be um, a rejection and price then continuation to bearish. With this retest of this level, you are con having confirmation of price continuing bullish. If you are entered here, where was it here, you are still already in profit, so you don't care much, even if it retraces. Maybe you don't want to enter exactly here because there's too much, you, it's, it's too late. In my opinion, for how I like to trade, it's too late to enter because you don't know if price will reject now here, here, or here. As you can see, price rejected there. So well, you don't want to be in this sort of price action. But if you enter there, if you entered at the lows, even with all this mess, you give 20 pips. Okay, you're still, if you have a runner, you're still okay. It has to come there to show you. But if it comes there, then 
you have more than enough confirmation also to possibly to enter a sell because price what is doing price price is breaking the order block lows retested the order block lows as you can see retested the ppl and then continuation bearish and there you go you have the failure to make new higher highs nope fails and you have the break and retest of the uh, let me do it like this failure to make it and you have the break and the retest of uh, the lows of the order block for price to continue down where could you have entered sales i don't know maybe here maybe there wherever you want but this is uh, more than enough confirmation for sales then of course we are back into a buy demand area and as you can see price is bouncing from there but this is a very nice uh, information page and i will use it as a thumbnail there you go okay so now let's have a look at my overall uh, training of today so i had the first loss on the left managed i missed the buys at support i took the first loss because it was my uh, low of this supply area i missed the entry exactly the supply i enter over there and i only got 10 pips plus break even 10 pips was not the partials I'm, I'm starting using 15 pips because the good trades always go to 15 pips but i think i also need to use 15 pips for the break even because as you can see this candle from here you went more than 100 pips and to be stopped out just because of this doesn't make much sense i took the buys once at break even in the I took a loss, managed and managed. I took the first win, 15 pips, and then break even. And then the second one, 15, 15 and 20. I close here. I had no confirmation of the price going back bullish. And I should have gone to 79, 80 pips. I missed the demand and area entries. And took the first loss, another loss. And then I took a win. If I had respected my plan, I would have avoided these first two losses because they were coming before uh, the 8.30 a.m. and I would have got the sales at the supply. I just wait. Okay, price is going. No rush, no FOMO. I will wait for price at supplies and I will sell from there. Absolutely. Okay. 100 pips. That's it for the day. 100 pips. Okay, maybe I can take 60, 70 more pips. When the price is bouncing from my demand area that's it two trades and i'm done i'm done for the day one and twice two trades winning trades 100 pips absolutely happy and i would have got some scalps in between from supply all the way back to demand should be looking for sales at pullbacks so that is another thing okay if i sell here I should not be looking for buys for buys because this is not a strong supply area. Supply, entries, uh, sells. We see that the bearish moves are good. We are respecting the market structure. We're not breaking above. We're not even retesting the supply e top. So I should only be looking for sales. Okay. Fail to break. I enter another sell here. Okay. A retest. I enter another sell. Pull back, enter sell. Pull back, enter sell. That's it. If the liquidity is coming from supply, sell, sell, sell. If I'm entering at the demand area, buy, buy, buys, buys. Maybe I can take one loss because it happens. But buys, 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 maybe buys and I lose. Buys and I win. Overall, it's good. So I should be taking sell, sell, sell. Let's, let's do it properly. Here. 
Look, more than 100 pips. Then you have the PPL, let's say PPL over here. You enter. You have the breaker test. You enter. You have the pullback and failing to break, make new highs. You enter. You have the pullback, you fail to make new highs, and you enter. Up until this is a one bias. One, two, three, four, five trades. All in the same bias. Unless, why? Because there's no market structure showing me otherwise. So there's no need, there's no, not even indecision for buys. Because market structure is clear. The same, let me remove this, is from the buys at a strong supply. So we have first buys. We have the second buys. And this go 20 pips, 25, 30 pips. Then maybe you have, you take these buys and you lose. And then you take these buys and it goes 94 pips. And then you take the breakery test. And then you take the one at 10 a.m. that I showed you. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six all in the same direction anyway this is it guys for today i hope you enjoyed and we'll see you tomorrow